All right, Bourbon Quest. It's your host, Bourbon Steve. So, dang, gum it. What did I leave over there? Maybe it's around here somewhere. Ugh. Eh, maybe we don't need it. All right, so welcome to another edition of Bourbon Quest. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to shoot a video tonight. Yeah, worked a double. So, got off a little bit early, not extremely so. Um, um, well, the results will come out tomorrow. Uh, I'm filming this on Tuesday night, election night. So, hopefully, everybody did their civic duty and got out there and voted. And uh, yeah, and so it's uh, all the precincts here in Knoxville are closed, so they're just tallying the votes. Uh, not a whole lot of major issues or tightly contested races here in Knoxville, or I think pretty much the state of Tennessee. But no, that's not the case in other areas of the nation. But uh, but irregardless, I think uh, as I was coming home tonight, listening to the radio on the election and stuff, that um, real surprisingly, like I don't know. I guess is where we're at in the polarization of our country. Even though in Knoxville and in the state of Tennessee, there's no really highly contested issues. No you know, tightly contested governor races. Billy's going to be uh, the governor again for the state of Tennessee for another four years, so happy about that. Um, but uh, I, it'll be interesting to see when the actual results come in, but I think it's going to be a landslide, at least here in Tennessee, um, and we'll see what happens throughout the nation. But I do know, despite there not being really any highly contested issues or highly, you know, contested races uh, for the most part in Knoxville State of Tennessee uh, what they were t saying on the radio is that voting was up like 30 percent from even the 2020 presidential election would this be yeah usually your presidential elections are going to get the most turnout and votes and especially with where we were at in 2020 uh, that was the case and and even with there not being any highly contested issues here in Knoxville or the state of Tennessee um, and it not being a presidential election and just being a midterm election, uh, what they were saying is um, voter turnout was like up oh, 30% from the presidential election just two years ago in 2020. So I think that's a good thing. People are getting out there and voting. So anyway, so more importantly, we're here about the whiskey. So I was like, what are we going to do tonight? Hadn't had anything really planned, but uh, anyway, so this is we're going to do a fresh cracking and a pairing of both whiskey and beer so what are we doing we're doing this is four roses single barrel barrel select store pick so single barrel barrel strength uh coming in at 61.4 so that's 122.8 yeah 122.8 proof uh, it is a store pick uh, from Total Wine. Is uh, I guess bottled October 2021. It's nine years, nine months. It's an OESQ recipe, which is 75% corn, 20% uh, rye, 5% malted barley, floral, fresh, medium body. Oh my gosh, I should read this next tag. So there's 10 different recipes for Four Rosen Bourbon OES, OBSV, OBSK, OBSQ, OBSO, OBSF, OESV, OESQ, or no, I'm sorry, OESK, then OESQ, OESO, and OESF. And so this one, which one was it again? OESQ, which is floral, uh, rose petal, Nikea banana, refreshing, medium bodied. Um, the bottle you're holding right now is a perfect example of why Four Roses is unique. We're the only bourbon distillery that combines five proprietary yeast strains with two separate mash bills, creating 10 distinct handcrafted bourbon recipes. Occasionally, a few exceptional aged barrels will present themselves 
and I personally set them aside to allow a few of our retailers to come in for a private tasting and selection. Each barrel selected is bottled without chill filtration at barrel strength. Since we add no water and along with the result of a little extra aging, each barrel yields only about 160 bottles, which we then private label for our retailers to offer to their customers. We are happy that you are about to experience and enjoy this rare, straight from the barrel bourbon. It was hand selected by your retailer for you to sip, savor, and proudly share. Cheers. Brent Elliott. Well, thank you, Brent. So, yeah, we got a fresh and corking on this bad boy. So, pause for cork pup. Here you go. Hope you voted because this is a America. Land of the free, home of the brave. All right, so we got that. And as always, we do a little two ounce pour for our infinity bottle here on Bourbon Quest. So let's do that. Dun, 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 dun. All right, there we have it. And then, so we're gonna do this with a pairing alongside a, hey, I probably will need that after all. Shit, all right, I'll be right back. Whoop, whoop. Come on, dude. there you go. All right, so, along with a fresh cork pot, this is a, so I, I did this because this is a new Belgium special release oak spire uh, bourbon barrel ale it's a four roses collaboration uh nine percent alcohol by volume so it was that 18 percent proof huh that's pretty good so yeah all right so not only do we have a fresh cork pop we have a fresh bottle pop of this new belgium four roses barrel aged hell yeah all right let's start off with the beer well, this might be the first. No, we did do a Guinness when we did our Irish car bonds, but we didn't really just drink the beer straight. We did it as an Irish car bond for uh, St. Patty's Day. But anyways, cheers, Bourbon Quest. This is uh, New Belgian Oak Spire Bourbon Barrel Ale, aged in Four Roses barrels. Cheers. That is good. I mean, yeah. It's a damn good beer. All right, let's go in for the whiskey. So, mm. I mean, you definitely get that floral on the front. Mm. And there's that proof. I do get that banana that I talked about. Loads of proof on it. Get that oak at nine years, nine months. Caramel, vanilla, baking, black pepper. Definitely get that spice. All right, cheers, Bourbon Quest. I love these Four Roses store picks, barrel strength. Mm. Man, you get that, you get that burn right up front. Definitely get that that floral, that banana, black pepper, rice spice, good mouth feel, nice hug. I think this is about my, I know I've got one from Pops, one from Excruges, which I killed both of those. And now this one from Total Wine. This is at least my third. I'm not, there might have been a fourth one in there. But anyways, this is the only one. I currently have of the uh, uh, barrel strength store pick, so I need to get another one before too long. But what the hell? We're just popping it open anyway. You cannot go wrong with these. These are freaking fantastic. And I mean, 
any of the local stores around me in Knoxville that that do a um, uh, uh, a single barrel barrel strength store pick of this, you by damn sure I'm gonna make I'm gonna make sure I get one um, if at all possible because never gonna pass one of these up. That's probably it's definitely in the top five uh, store picks that I think you can get. Um, obviously, I've not, well, I'm still waiting. I still have not been, and I don't even understand because I, I see them all the time on other posts and stuff. One store pick that I have yet to be able to get that I desperately want, and especially being here in Knoxville, two and a half hours or so away from Jack Daniels Artillery, I have still yet to get a Jack Daniels barrel strength store pick yeah they do their freaking single barrel store picks which are fine but i i've been wanting since i started my bourbon quest to and i've i've yet to see any story in east tennessee that i'm aware of get one in the two years that i've been on my bourbon quest although i'll see them posted in you know texas kentucky indiana Delaware, wherever the fuck else. Why we can't get one in East Tennessee two and a half hours away from the distillery, I don't know. And especially when you think you got a, a big boy like Total Wine who sells the shit out of Jack Daniels. I don't know why we can't get one. That's so I that's still on my list to get. Um obviously Old Forester, uh Barrel Strength Store Picks. Are in my top five. Four Roses. Um, yeah, Colonel Taylor, but those are so hard to get. And I don't even know if they're really that much better than a small batch. So, yeah. Um, but definitely Four Roses, Old Forester. I still desperately want to get a Jack Daniels store pick. Um, Old Kirk. Uh, store picks are out there. Uh, I'm thinking off the top of my head. Oh, and have I ever? Get, I don't even know if I've gotten one of those. I don't think I've ever gotten a, a Weller antique store pick. I've gotten an Eagle, several Eagle Rare store picks. So I guess I would say Eagle Rare is up there too. Probably my top five. Four Roses, Old Forester. Eagle Rare, Old Kirk, what else? And I'm still gonna put it in there even though I haven't got one of those. I want a damn Jack Daniels single barrel barrel strength store pick. But here, Four Roses, cheers to you. Happy election day. Yeah, I mean, you get that rye spice, I get that banana, caramel, vanilla, the oak on the age on that. Beautiful mouthfeel and viscosity. A little bit of molasses and bacon as well. Man, these sip gets better. I wish I could drink some more of that, but I better not at 120 something proof. But I will drink the beer, because this is Freaking delicious too. 9% alcohol by volume. Mmm. Yeah. I mean, you get that Four Roses flavor on it as well. Freaking fantastic beer. Um, where did I pick that up at? I picked up, they were, they were about six pack. It wasn't terribly expensive. I think it was about. Fourteen, fifteen dollars for a six pack at nine percent alcohol by volume. Aged in four roses. Yeah, I picked up uh, two six packs. I mean, I think it, where I picked it up probably still has them. Where I probably need to pick up one, one more six pack. I don't drink a lot of beer, but uh, probably. I mean, I always stock up on uh, Oktoberfest, which was. 
uh, you know, last month or the last couple months, I got about four cases uh, of those and uh, yeah, four uh, 24 pack cases of those and then saw this and got like two six packs of that and probably need to get at least one more six pack of that because this is good so I, if you have this available in your area uh, it is uh, New Belgium Oak Spire aged in four roses barrels cheers bourbon course hey let me know what you think about both the uh, uh, single barrel barrel strength store picks I absolutely love them if you love everyone I've ever had and uh, and I really you know not being a, a big beer drinker love this uh, Oak Spire so cheers bourbon request hey if you haven't done so do yourself a favor well no first off do me a favor and then the channel a favor subscribe it don't cost anything just click that subscribe button and then do yourself a favor ring that bell for notifications that way you don't miss a damn thing here on bourbon quest because Hello, little re uh, I don't know where we're what, in the second week of November, so, damn. We only got a month and a half left in this year. I mean, Thanksgiving's, like, what, two and a half weeks away? Oh, so, there should be a lot of great stuff coming over the next month and a half. Definitely, uh, December, we'll be doing an Advent calendar, and then right after Christmas, we'll be doing... <clears throat> Uh, blind flights for our top 10 whiskeys of the year here on Bourbon Quest. Um, hopefully between now and Christmas we get a few more entries into that. I uh, got a couple, at least two to four bottles I plan on picking up between now and then that I know are already out there that I got my eye on. Um, then I'll probably pull the trigger on very soon and then who knows what will happen. Um, yeah, so we'll have that, um, and then, yeah, 2023 will be here before we know it. I think 2023 is going to be the best year ever on my bourbon quest. At least that's my expectations. I think, yeah, I, I, I started it really in 2020. Didn't start the channel until 2021, but I feel like 2020 was better than 2021. I feel like this year's, yeah, I think even though I just started, 2020 was better. 2021, I don't think overall was as good, but the Jack Daniels Coy Hill for 2021 was freaking fantastic. I think 2022 has even been uh, a little bit disappointing overall. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple exceptions out there and you'll see those coming up for the top 10 whiskeys of the year. Uh, but I really think coming out of this pandemic and where the bourbon industry is going overall, I think 2023 is going to be freaking fantastic. Or at least that's my expectation and, and my hope. But I think it's going to be true. And I know we're going to be doing a lot of great things in 2023. Cheers, Bourbon Quest. And also, smash that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithms. And then leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the Four Roses uh, single barrel, barrel strength store picks. And if you, this is a great freaking beer, let me know. I want to hear your comments, Bourbon Quest. You're great about putting them out there. I love them. All right, I guess that's all I got for tonight. Um,. Yeah, it's Tuesday night. Um, I'm actually off Friday night, so we'll, we'll do a video Friday night and put it up probably on Saturday. Um, as my Vols take on, is it, I think it's Missouri. We're still for number five in the college football playoff. I think, I really think if we went out, which we should, we'll still... And that's all I care. I don't care if we're number one or not. As long as we get into the playoff and have a chance. I was I was at the national championship game in 98. Funny story about that. So, back in 98, when we won the title, 
Um, yeah, I was a, uh, was I a season ticket holder? I, I think I became a season ticket holder a year or two after. Anyways, nonetheless, so 98, um, we're going to play Florida State in the national championship game. And a, be, a buddy of mine that I work with named Kobe Hunt. Shout out Kobe Hunt. I haven't talked to you in a long time, bro. Give me a shout. Um, anyway, so uh, I think the game was played like on January the 3rd or something like that. So we were uh, a co-worker of ours, our previous co well, she still was, just moved to uh, Lexington. And so we were going to fly out the day before the game. And so we, we drove up to a friend of ours house that we used to work with to stay the night with her and um, and then catch a flight like at 6 a.m. in the morning well there was a freaking tremendous we didn't even have tickets I just knew that in previous experiences when I went to bow games I was able to pick them up at face value or less and so we drive up there and it, there's a freaking snowstorm that night. And so I, I'm on the phone at four or five o'clock in the morning. All the flights are canceled out of Lexington. I'm on the phone, uh, on the phone with the air carrier. And I'm like, well, what can you do to help us out? Can you reroute us? Blah, blah, blah. She goes, well, um, if you can make it from uh, Lexington to Louisville and get you on a flight out of Louisville like around noon or something like okay okay yeah we'll, we, we'll do it so we drive through the snowstorm and we catch our flight and so our connection we get so we start we drove from Lexington to Louisville and then got the plane to Louisville and then our connection was in Minneapolis then to go to Tempe, Arizona. And so, more beer. Um, we get on a plane, I tell people that, yeah, it was the first, well, the only plane crash I was involved in. So apparently, um, the catering truck, like, hit the plane, so, it's like, well, we got our, our flight was like for midnight. So we spent like two, two and a half hours on, they wouldn't do this today. This was in 98. So we're on the plane for like two, two and a half hours. And because they got to, you know, check everything, and they didn't allow, allow us off the plane. So the engines aren't running. It's like, it's like negative 20 outside. So it's probably like, 20 degrees inside because there's no heat and me and my buddy Kobe I'm like all right don't tell me about it but we're gonna need to cuddle just to create some body heat because I'm freaking about to get frostbitten here nonetheless uh, two two and a half hours later uh, they allow us to take off and so instead of arriving the day before the game, which we were supposed to play golf at Ganey Ranch, blah, 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 blah. So we, we get there instead of the day before the game, the day of the game, like we get there at 6, 7 a.m. We already had our hotel reserved. We check in, we sleep till like 12 or 1. The game's not till 8 o'clock. So we get up at like 12 or 1, hit downtown Tempe, pregame a little bit, go to the on the streets we got tickets for face value which i want to say was about 120 then i don't even know what it is now probably like three or four hundred but and so we got our tickets lower level and they ended up being kind of uh about the 10 to 15 yard line we were in between where espn was and the ut band was obviously a great game tennessee wins we get, so at 8 o'clock kickoff, so I guess we get out of there about midnight. Well, like, the bars closed in, at that time, I don't know about now, but at that time, like in freaking Phoenix, or Tempe, 
the, the bars either closed at midnight or one o'clock so they either closed right when we got out or an hour later so we didn't do shit but anyways this is a great game national championship um and since then we had a few more good years but it's been it's been at least a 20 year drought but i i mean granted our our reign of national championships was from 51 and then 98 so hell i don't know if, i don't really think that we can win it this year maybe i mean give us a shot i mean that's all you want is to get in the playoffs and have a shot right i no one expected us even ut fans no one expected us to be in the college football playoff conversation even i don't think so we'll see what happens Cheers, Bourbon Quest. All right, that's a wrap. I'm on a ramble. And probably most of you don't even fucking care about the Tennessee football. I do. But what we all care about is the whiskey. And what we all care about is our rights as Americans to vote and make a difference in what happens in our lives and community and yada yada. All right, that's a wrap. I don't know where I'm going. Hey, tune in, because next time, who knows what it'll be. I don't even know. But that's why you want to subscribe. That's why you want to ring that bell for notifications. Smash that like button. Leave a comment. And remember, as always, that my wish for you is that all your bourbon quest dreams come true. Ha <laughs> ha. Make America great. That's a wrap, yo.